Robert Emmett, the darling of Ireland. Bold Robert Emmett, he'll die with a smile. Farewell, companions, both loyal and daring. I lay down my life for the Emerald Isle. That's a little song about bold Robert Emmett, and uh, Robert Emmett is the namesake of Emmett County, and I'm Jim Gillespie, and with me is Ed Carmen, and uh, we're here at the uh, uh, Emmett Celtic shop in downtown Petoskey, and we represent the Robert Emmett Society, um, and we are going to give you a bit of history about why Emmett County got named Emmett County as part of the Blast from the Past series um, for uh, Emmett County. Um, as I say, uh, the county got named Emmett after being initially named Tonawagana uh, back in 1840 when Henry Schoolcraft was going around the state uh, naming counties after Native American names. But in 1843, there was this uh, uh, movement, uh, and it was called the Great Renaming, where many counties' uh, names got changed. And uh, Tonawagana County got changed uh, through the efforts of uh, some gentlemen on Mackinac Island, uh, the O'Malley brothers. One was a state or a territory senator, and one was the local sheriff. And they wanted to honor the uh, Irish uh, immigrants who had come to Michigan to help build the railroads and help uh, with the maritime activity and the logging. And so uh, they introduced a, a bill that got Tonawagana changed to Emmett County in uh, 1843. Along with several other counties, uh, they were able to name four uh, counties in Ireland, Antrim County, um, Roscommon, Wexford, and Clare all got named at the same time. So um, it's kind of an interesting uh, sidebar to the fact that uh, Michigan uh, was uh, part of the immigration movement back in the 1800s and the significance of that is honored uh, today uh, by chain, by having the name Emmett County as being one of the counties in Michigan. So that's a little little history about why Emmett County got named Emmett. My name is Ed Carmen. Uh, I am the owner of County Emmett Celtic Shop here in Petoskey, the cor corner of Petoskey and Lake. Uh, we've been here since the fall of 2010. Uh, the shop offers um, Celtic merchandise, although it's primarily Irish, um, food, clothing, art, jewelry. Um, I have a retail background. I've always had an interest in Irish history. I have some family in Ireland, so it all kind of came, to came together uh, when I started the shop. The um, shop is involved with the Robert Emmett Society here in Petoskey. Um, we're a group of primarily local residents. I am currently on the board, as is Jim Gillespie. Jim is our treasurer. Um, we raise funds to send a student to Ireland for a semester of study every year. Uh, the Robert Emmett Society was uh, uh, founded in 1990. Its original aim was to bring a statue of Emmett to uh, Emmett County in Petoskey. There are currently uh, four statues in the world. Um, California, Golden Great. Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, Emmitsburg, Iowa, Washington, D.C., and Dublin, Ireland, and St. Stephen's Green. And the Society's original aim was to uh, have a fifth statue here. Uh, by the early 90s, for several reasons, that, uh, that idea didn't gain any traction. And uh, there were a small group of individuals in the Society at that point that wanted to take the, keep the Society alive and uh, move it in a, a different direction. And what they came up with was the scholarship. Um, since 95, uh, the Robert Emma Society has offered a scholarship through North Central Michigan College and the Galway Mayo Institute in Ireland, where we send a student, uh, it's an essay and interview competition. The winner goes to Ireland for a semester of study at GMIT uh, every year. Uh, we've been offering the scholarship for 18 years and our current Scholar number 14 is still in Ireland. She's a local resident, uh, Jess LaBrush. The, uh, the Robert Emmett Society, um, we have uh, several fundraisers throughout the year to, to fund the, the scholarship to send a student to Ireland. Uh, our main fundraiser we call the Hooli, and it's usually uh, a day or two before uh, St. Patrick's Day this year. It's uh, March 16th. It's in the uh, H.O. Rose Room at the Perry Hotel. Um, we have a silent auction, uh, uh, dinners available, 
Uh, we have musical acts, Jim and the, Jim Gillespie and the Hooligans uh, as part of Bliss Fest will be there. The Hooli is open to the public. Uh, admission is $10, $5 for uh, uh, students and Robert Emma Society scholars. Uh, again, it is our main fundraiser for the year. It's uh, one of the ways that we uh, we uh, are able to send a student to Ireland. Um, down the road, we're also going to be working on a statue here in Ireland, or a statue here in in, uh, in Petoskey. That was the society's original aim, and we do want to get back on that. And we're also going to be starting, and Jim's going to be heading a music scholarship in Emmett County for junior high and high school students. So that's. Uh, Another reason for the fundraising, we have uh, the Hooli in March, and in, in the fall and September, we have a night to remember commemorating uh, Emmett's uh, execution and death. You might be um, interested in knowing a Hooli is, is an Irish term for, for basically a gathering, a party, usually with a, a fair amount of lively music, stories, and food, and probably a little drink involved too, and dancing. Mm. So yeah. a Hooli is basically an Irish kitchen party. And so that's why we named it the Hooli after that mm -hmm. tradition in Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, Blissfest, uh, I'm, I'm the, the director and founder of Blissfest and we are, and also I'm the treasurer of the uh, Robert Emmett Society. And it's, it's been a, you know, we're kindred spirits since the Irish are so fond of music and poetry and Blissfest is uh, the Roots Music Connection in Emmett County. So it was a pretty easy match for me to get involved in the Robert Emmett Society and mm -hmm. I'm always happy to provide uh, our organization and myself personally provide uh, Irish music for, for these events. Mm -hmm. uh, Robert Emmett was uh, the youngest of 18. Uh, he was born to a very well-to-do uh, Anglo-Irish family. His father was uh, what we would call today the um, Surgeon General. He was a state surgeon for the uh, British aristocracy in Ireland, uh, the British rulers in Ireland. Uh, at a young age, uh, he was influenced by uh, Wolf Tone and other Irish revolutionaries. Uh, he saw the injustice in Ireland as far as uh, not only religion but uh, the class structure. Uh, as he grew up, he formed some opinions that were contrary to the powers that be. Uh, as a young man, he was uh, top of his class at Trinity College in Dublin, but was expelled because of his uh, political opinions and leanings. Uh, after he was expelled, uh, he took it upon himself to form a uh, small group to try and oust the, uh, the English from Ireland. In 1803, he um, led a failed revolt in Dublin. Um, the downside, aside from the failed revolt, was uh, he was uh, captured. He had the opportunity to leave Ireland and escape. Uh, he had a, a young fiance at the time, and he did not want to leave the country because of her. And in the end, that was his downfall. Uh, he was captured, tried, uh, found guilty, uh, executed on uh, Thomas Street in downtown Dublin. It's uh, in front of a church. The church is still there today. Uh, after he was uh, hung, unfortunately, <laughs> To put too fine of a point on it, the English beheaded him, uh, put his head on a pike, and paraded it around town. Uh, one of the things that uh, Emmett was known for is uh, uh, he um, described himself, he wanted to be the George Washington of Ireland. He, uh, he admired Washington and uh, how he had uh, for helped to free uh, um, the states from the British rule, and he wanted to be known as doing the same thing in Ireland. Uh, one of my previous trips to Ireland, um, we were in, a, in what is called the, the Trad District, which is where the traditional music is played primarily. Um, there was a museum that we wanted to see, and it wasn't open yet, so we stopped into this, uh, this um, it was a pub that was in a restored church. And uh, while we were in the pub, um, talking to the, one of the, the barmen behind the counter, uh, he mentioned that there was a, a cemetery next door, which all the stones had been removed, and had been made into a park. And, you know, in conversation, where are you from? Petoskey, Emmett County. And he said, well, you know, Lord Norbury, the, the uh, judge that sentenced Emmett to death, is buried in you know, what was the cemetery next door, and now it's a park. And I said, I didn't know that. And he said, to this day, the Irish will go into that park. They don't know where he's buried because all the tombstones are gone. But they will symbolically spit because of their the disdain for Lord Mor Norbury and what he did to Robert Emmett. Emmett is that revered, as Jim said, to this day in Ireland. So all the yeah. immigrants who came over, you know, uh, had that name, and, and I think, you know, the, the O'Malley's who started this, uh, you know, changed the names of some counties, you know, they 
selected that name. That was the only mm -hmm. individual that they selected. So mm -hmm. obviously he was highly revered, uh, you know, with the immigrants and, and you know, uh, everybody, even nowadays, if you go to Ireland, everybody knows who Robert Emmett is. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's definitely a fixture in their history, you know. They get taught it early. Yes, they do, yeah. This is the song called Bold Robert Emmett by Thomas More in honor of Robert Emmett, who was a contemporary of Thomas More in Ireland. Bold Robert Emmett, the darling of Ireland. Bold Robert Emmett, he'll die with a smile. Farewell, companions, both loyal and daring. I lay down my life for the Emerald Isle. Now the struggle is over, the boys are defeated. Old Ireland surrounded by sadness and gloom. We were defeated, shamefully treated. And I, Robert Emmett, awaiting my doom. Bold Robert Emmett, the darling of Ireland. Bold Robert Emmett, he'll die with a smile. Farewell, companions, both loyal and daring. I lay down my life for the Emerald Isle.